German philosopher George Hegel once said, "Whatever is reasonable is true, and whatever is true is reasonable." This gave me one of the most important theory in my life when I'm thinking critically, which is, everything in the world makes sense. If something happens and doesn't make sense, that means you don't know the whole truth. When I'm thinking about COVID-19 pandemic, most of the things make sense in their own way, regardless of from the perspective of West or from the perspective of China. But there's one thing I just don't get it: why America was so confident that the virus wouldn't affect them. Ordinary Americans, yeah, maybe, because they don't know that much. But those experts, especially the U.S. government and the U.S. president, despise the virus so much. The signal from China was very clear: this virus is no joke. It is very infectious. Thousands of new cases are confirmed every day. Dozens or even hundreds of people die every day. A large number of people will be infected, and a large number of people will die if you don't do anything about it. The Chinese government locked down cities, completely blockaded the entire province, isolated almost 1.5 billion people across the country. You guys know this? They are fully aware of it, because Western media are reporting everything about it every day. So what this virus can do is well known, but how do the U.S. react to it? They are very confident that this virus won't affect them. I don't get this. You guys may be smarter than me, but to me. This is very unreasonable. If my neighbor's house is on fire, what should I do? Okay, I don't like my neighbor. Maybe I will say my neighbor is a very bad person. Maybe I say、uh, they're a mess. Maybe I will say what they're doing now is wrong. And by the way, these American politicians have already done all of them. But put aside ideology, put aside finger pointing. If my neighbor's house is on fire. My first reaction will definitely be finding a way to prevent the fire from burning my house. But America's response was that they were extremely confident the fire wouldn't come, and even if it comes, we're fully ready for it. But what are you talking about? There have been many global virus outbreaks in history, each of which will not only affect the United States but also had a great impact. But American politicians were exceptionally confident. In addition, the timeline also confused me. As we all know, the novel coronavirus was recognized by everyone in early January. Information about the virus was shared to the whole world on January 12th. Statistically speaking, the outbreak of virus in China began around January 23rd. The outbreak in the United States began on March 23rd and continues to today. Why did it take so long for the virus to spread to the United States? Think about the number of people traveling between China and the United States every day. It should spread to United States very quickly. One more thing: when the epidemic first spread to UK, their idea was herd immunity. Herd immunity was not a new idea. It has been tried and tried many times, but it has never been successful in history in fighting pandemic. Tens of thousands of people still die of influenza every year. If herd immunity could work, the flu would have died out. Why British was thinking of using something that has never worked to fight a virus which is obviously deadly? All my questions can be summarized into one question: How come British and Americans believe that the virus is not a big deal when it is clearly not? I've been very confused for a long time, but I know something is not right. As I mentioned earlier, if something doesn't make sense, then what I know must not be the whole truth. Finally, I have the answer. The University of Cambridge released a research paper on April 9th. COVID-19 genetic network analysis provides a snapshot of pandemics. It is interesting to know that the major media in the United States have reported so much about COVID-19 recently, but all major media in the United States have collectively chosen to ignore such an authoritative research report completed by University of Cambridge, not some random university, with shocking results. I can find very little information about it. I try to post it on major website myself, but obviously it can't be done for all kinds of strange reasons. Fortunately, I found it on YouTube, so I dare to make this video. Otherwise, I don't want to take the risk. Okay, let's read this report. Cambridge University analyzed the virus samples from all over the world, including 160 samples collected in early stage of epidemic, and found three different variants. A, B, and C of the virus. 
Among them, A is the closest to the most primitive natural sample taken from bats. So A should be the earliest form of virus transmitted to human beings. Here comes the shocking part. The most primitive COVID-19 type A was not the main infection type in Wuhan. Type A was actually found from Americans living in Wuhan. This basically suggests the virus was brought to China by those Americans living in China. What about people in Wuhan and rest of the Chinese people? Chinese and other East Asians were infected with virus type B. America claimed China is the source of the virus, but what Chinese has was not original virus. In other words, the Chinese are not infected with the first generation virus, but at least the second generation virus, maybe the third generation, we don't know, but not the first generation virus. Type B is different from viruses from outside of East Asia. In other words, the virus that broke out in other countries were not transmitted by China. So basically, China is neither the source of the virus nor the distributor of the virus. So what kind of virus are Europeans and rest of the world infected with? It is another variant, type C. And listen carefully, the virus type C, the one infected people all over the world, can't be found in China. It further confirmed that the virus was not distributed from China to the whole world. Okay, let me sum it up for you. The natural source of the virus is bats. The first generation of COVID-19, type A, infected American and Australian. The second generation is Chinese. And the third generation has infected people all over the world, but not Chinese. I feel that Cambridge University will soon be classified a terrorist organization by the United States, and the virologist is a Chinese spy. In fact, after I read the report, I found everything suddenly all makes sense now. I have answers to all the questions that have troubled me for a long time. I don't want to be banned, so I won't say I have a conclusion, but I want to say that I have thought of a possibility that can explain all the doubts I have. Why didn't American politicians take COVID-19 seriously? I think there's only one reasonable explanation. The virus has been in the United States for some time, but it didn't cause much impact. At least, not more than seasonal flu. Actually, some clues can be found from President Trump's own words. He said, When you have the flu, I mean, view this the same as the flu. Maybe US government was treating COVID-19 as flu before the outbreak started in China. Why don't you tell people that this virus exists? He said, You don't want to see panic. There's no need to deal with the virus. You know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. So you don't have to worry about it at all. Also, do you guys remember this? When he talked with many experts about this virus. Every one of these doctors said, how do you know so much about this? He's the businessman, and now he's a president. He has never been a medical expert. He can't know so much. The only possibility is that this matter is new to everyone, but not to him. He has probably been reported of the COVID-19 by experts around him for some time. So long, even him have learned enough about the virus could shock some medical professionals. The most suspicious part of this is that 2019 is actually a year of severe influenza. In the United States alone, 39 to 56 million people were infected, and 24,000 to 62,000 people have died. But since the COVID-19 broke out in the United States, what about the flu? Where are those flu patients? Before the outbreak of COVID-19, according to CDC's own data, up to 3.8 million people go to hospital every month. Up to 106,000 people hospitalized because of flu every month. 9,000 deaths every month. How come the flu just stopped immediately after the COVID-19 broke out? Have you seen any news about the seasonal flu lately? I don't see it anymore. Do you know someone who has the flu now? Not among people I know. So we have a probable answer. Why US politicians were so confident that the virus will not cause much impact? Because the virus has already caused impact in America and it wasn't much. Another evidence is Australia. Asian are basically type B. European people are basically type C. 
In only Australia and United States have the most cases of primitive type A. The death rate in USA is high now because the epidemic center of USA is New York, and most people in New York are infected with type C. Australia is the only country now mostly infected by type A. Take a look at the data of Australia. Up to today, only 6,000 people have been infected, and only 61 have died. The total mortality rate is less than 1%. Not that I think 1% is acceptable, but compared with later variants, type B and type C, type A is not bad. This is exactly why America didn't take this virus seriously. Because they already had coronavirus type A before China, and it wasn't too bad. So when COVID-19 broke out in China, the reaction of Americans was reasonable. Because US politicians was wondering, what happened? This virus is not that bad. Why China was like that when this virus goes to China? Really? That many people died? Locked down cities and entire province? And even isolated the whole country for this minor coronavirus? Why? Okay, it is because your political system is not good. Your government is incompetent. And the Chinese people are just too weak. Unlike us, we Americans, our system is good, our doctors are good, and our citizens are strong. I used to think American politicians were just watching from afar and taking the opportunity and deliberately attack China for no good reasons, like what they have always been doing. Now I understand. They actually have good reasons. They have compared what has happened in the United States with what is happening in China. They really think so. They really believe the virus is not a big deal. The problem is your government and your people. Another strange thing is, why is the most primitive virus popular in Australia besides the United States? You should know the virus prevail in other parts of the world are type B and type C. Only United States and Australia are type A. And it's not like those two countries border each other. When I think about this, I immediately think of something unusual did happen in Australia in 2019. The bushfire. Australia had a big bushfire that lasted for a few months in the second half of 2019. I believe we all remember that many animals were burned to death in the bushfire. More important, many animals' natural habitats were destroyed by fire and forced to migrate. This has resulted in two things. One, many animals' territory didn't coincide and they didn't disturb each other in the past, but they are now forced to live together and disturb each other. Second, animals were originally far away from human community, but now they're forced to get close to human. So I'm just speculating, okay? I'm nobody, don't get me too seriously. Is it because of the bushfire that the virus have been given the chance to spread across the species? Is it because of the fire that animals that were far away from human beings were brought closer to us, so the virus was able to transmit it to human? I live in Australia. And I remember a large number of bats were forced by bushfire to move out of the natural habitats and accumulated in large numbers in cities. I believe everyone in Australia remember the news about some 250,000 bats gathered in a small town. I've lived in Australia for more than 10 years. Besides China, Australia is my second hometown. But I have a bad feeling about this. As we are getting closer to the truth, Australia is likely to be thrown under the bus in the future.